kick, now kick, now walk it by yourself. Now walk it by yourself. Well, hello and welcome back to our flipped classroom here. We've got a big topic tonight, and it's called linear regression and lines of best fit. Now, you've got to stop wherever you are and make sure you have your calculator. It is 100% on the calculator. It is not something you can do without it. And you're going to find that a lot in this course, Algebra 2. We rely heavily on that graphing calculator. So pause me, stop what you're doing, and go get it. Exercise 1. A pediatrician would like to determine the relationship between infant female weights versus age. The pediatrician shows studies 100 newborn girls and finds their average weight at the end of the three-month intervals. The data is shown in the table. So just take note, we have age in months versus average weight. So when an infant baby, female, is zero months old, they average 7.2 pounds. When that infant female is three months old, they average 11.8 pounds. And again, you can continue to read on. So three parts so far. Part A, create a scatter plot on the grid to your right. Be sure to label your axes appropriately. So we're going to treat this as our first quadrant, basically. So I'm going to treat this as my x-axis, and of course this is my y-axis. Now, the reason I did that is I don't have any negative ages, which makes sense, so I don't need to have anybody negative on the x-axis. I just needed this positive quadrant. I have all positive values and all positive values. So, this is pretty straightforward. Whatever is first is always your x. Whatever is second is your y, just alphabetical, x before y. Now, I have to go on the x-axis from 0 to 15. I think I can count by 1s. It's a little sloppy, but I've squeezed them in there. Okay, now, on my y-axis, notice I have to go from 7.2 to 24.8. Now, I certainly am not going to count by 1s all the way up. That wouldn't make sense. 15 barely fit this way. Um, so perhaps I'll count by 2s. Okay, now, there's no wrong answer, obviously, you just got to make sure it fits, so think before you start writing. Now, all a scatter plot is, is me plotting these points. So, let me label this as age, and this side was weight, average weight. So, when I have a zero age, go to zero, I should be plotting 7.2 in height. So, I'm just going to estimate that it's right about there. And this is, that's perfect. We don't need to be exact. 3 and 11.8, so I'm going to be right about there. Let's see, 6 and 15.5, so I would say right about there. 9 and 18.2, maybe right there. 12 and, let's see, 21.5, we'll say there. And 15, 24.8 right there. Now notice you're not connecting. A scatter plot is just points scattered and you're done. Now the next part says use a ruler and draw a line that you think best fits this data. As a general guideline try to draw it such that there are many data points above the line as below the line. So again you are not drawing a line that connects all of them. For example I don't want to see something like this. It says you are drawing a line that you think best fits the data and you should have points above and points below. Now I'm going to attempt this on here and hopefully it comes out okay. Uh, let me see if I can move that. I'm going to move my line, so I'm drawing a straight line. I'm going to say maybe about... Oops, I can't move it anymore. There we go. Maybe about there, I'm going to think, and that's just my opinion, I think that's where the line of best fit is. Now notice, I've got a couple points above, that one kind of hits it, I've got a couple points below. I'm just drawing this one random line that I think best fits the data. Now part C, um, I'm actually going to skip and I want to jump to a different part, so let's not worry about that at the moment. Part D, using the linear regression command on your calculator, linreg, lin find the equation of the best fit line for this data and round your coefficients to the nearest tenth. All right, now do not waste your time here. You need to go get your graphing calculator and play with these buttons with me. I'm going to spend a lot of time showing you how to type this in. So we're all prepared tomorrow, no excuses. This is an absolute must. 
Okay, now you are going to take notes at the same time. We want to have all these steps written in the notebook. So tomorrow in class, you can go through them step by step and same on any other spiral or anything we need. So the first thing you're doing is you're grabbing that calculator and you are going to hit the stat button. Let me circle it for you if you can't read my picture very well. It's right there. It says stat. Hit that button once. Okay. After you hit that, you should see this screen appear next. Edit's the very first thing in there. Notice it should already be highlighted on edit, so you can just pre press enter or hit one for edit. Okay, so you are going stat and then you are choosing edit. So press enter. When you do that, you should see a table like I have here. It should start with L1, L2, L3. Now, you may or may not have information in here. It depends who you used your calculator last. Okay, but either way, we should see L1, L2, L3. Now, if you're missing in L1 or maybe you have L2, L3, L4, that's okay. What we want to do is clear anything out we have in there. So, to clear it out, okay, we'll take a little side note. We want to clear out anything in there. You arrow up. and highlight L1 in my case. Because I have junk in here, I'm going to arrow up and highlight L1. So you'll hit the arrow. You might have to arrow over twice, but your goal is to highlight L1. Once you've done that, okay, you are going to hit clear and enter. Okay, Not delete. You're going to hit clear and enter. The clear button is right under the arrows. Okay, So again, you should be highlighting on L1. It should you know, move that cursor up and over to L1. You are hitting clear and enter, and it will clear anything out. If you have anything in L2, do the same thing. Highlight up to L2, hit clear and enter. Okay, once we have those cleared out, we're going to enter our information. So, you're going to take your X values and put them in L1. Okay, those are the X values. They go in just the same order we saw them on the paper. Um, let me show you those values again. They were right here. I'm putting all of these numbers in L1. So you hit 0, enter. 3, enter. 6, enter. 9, enter. 12, enter. 15, enter. And it will fill up L1. Then you move over and you put all the Y values in L2. Alright, so you're just reading your table in order. 7.2, enter. 11.8, enter. You get the idea. Okay, once you've got them in there, we're halfway home. You're going to go back to that stat button. Remember, stat was under the delete by the arrows there. We already circled it once. You're going to hit stat. Now, when you do that, at the top, calc is a choice there, calculate. You need to arrow to the right so you see calc. And we are writing a linear regression. That's what the directions asked for, lin regression. Okay, which happens to be number four. So you can either arrow down to number four and hit enter, or you can just press four, and it will take you there. Okay, so choose number four. Once you've chosen four, this is what should appear on your calculator. Linear regression, AX plus B. That's exactly what four said. Now you have to tell the calculator where you put your data. Now remember, on my calculator, I put my information in L1 and L2. Did you use the same? If you were missing in the L1 and put it in L2 and L3, then you're going to have to choose those instead. But again, my information is in L1 and L2. So here's what comes next. On this, oops, on this same line, we want to go L1, L2. So to get that L1 and L2, it's a button on your calculator, and you'll notice the L1, probably haven't seen in a long time, is sitting on the 1. Now, notice it's in blue on my calculator, perhaps another one on yours. I'm going to have to hit my blue second button first. So on this same line, my calculator should read linear regression AX plus B. I am now hitting second 1, and when I do that, an L1 should pop up, comma, the comma is above the number 7, uh, second 2, and an L2 should pop up. Once you have that, you can go ahead and press enter. So here's what my screen looked like. Um, notice it moved over the LINR part, and I see this end with my L1, L2, and now I'm going to press enter. 
When I press enter, I get this wonderful piece of data. You have no idea how useful this is going to be yet. Now, I have my equation written first, y equals ax plus b, that's a linear equation, similar to back from algebra when we said y equals mx plus b. Remember this m represents your slope or the number coefficient of x, and this number here, this b, is your y-intercept. Um, now they'll tell you the a value, they'll tell you the b value, and you might have this r and r squared. If you didn't, you didn't do anything wrong, it's just something we have to turn on, and we don't actually need it yet, so I'm just going to cross it off. And if you don't have it, no big deal at the moment. Alright, now, let me pull up that question one last time. And here's what we were finding after all of this. It says, using the linear regression command on your calculator, L-I-N-R-E-G, find the equation for the line of best fit. And that's our goal. So it's very simple. At this point, you are literally copying. You start by whatever equation's at the top there. Y equals AX plus B. They'll tell you exactly what to plug in. Next thing I'm plugging in is the A value. And notice it says to the nearest tenth. So I've got Y equals to the nearest tenth. I'm going to call that 1.1 X plus, they tell me the B value, to the nearest tenth is 7.9. And you did it. That's all they're looking for. The equation for the line of best fit. Now, what does that mean to us? Let me scroll back up to my picture. You can turn back in your notebook. What we just wrote is the equation for this line that we have drawn in here. And let's see if it makes sense. We said it was y equals, oh shoot, I think it was 1.1, oh, let me grab it again, 1.1x plus 7.9. Okay, and remember, this coefficient of x is the slope. Um, it's positive. Would you agree that this is a positive slope, a line that's going upward? It's not very steep, so a 1.1 is very reasonable. And we've kind of, uh, 7.9 is where they said the y-intercept was. Now remember, we just drew in what we thought was the line of best fit. And I would say we were pretty close. So basically, that's what we did. We wrote the equation for that line. All right. If at any point it goes too fast, remember to pause it, rewind, and try it again. Exercise 2. Using the equation that you had uh, from your calculator in exercise 1, so let me go back and get that. So y equals 1.1x plus 7.9. Predict the weight of a baby girl after 10 months. Round your answer to the nearest tenth of a pound. All right, so this is simple. You're using the equation you wrote, and they're giving you something to plug in. They said 10 months. Now, all you got to do is look at your table. Was months the x value or the y value? Well, when I looked at my table, I just read it, months was that first one, that was x and that was y. So they're just telling me to evaluate f of 10, plug in 10 to the letter x. Okay, and I'm not guessing, months was that first column, which was x. So y equals 1.1, substitute with parentheses, plus 7.9. Now you don't need to do anything in your head, just grab your calculator, multiply, all on one line is perfect. And it says to the nearest tenth of a pound, hopefully I did the math right, I got 18.9 pounds. All right, let's just watch our units there. We found pounds. What we just did is something called interpolation. When we substitute in an x value, Exercise 3 says, using that equation that your calculator produced in exercise 1, so again, let's rewrite it, so y equals 1.1x plus 7.9, predict the weight of a baby girl after 2 years. Predict the weight of a baby girl after 2 years. So ask yourself, they tell you 2 years, are they telling you the x value or the y value? Well, yours doesn't match up with either of them, so let's use a little common sense. I have to use months or pounds. Which one does this actually correspond to? Hopefully you're saying months. You can't plug two in because this table is in months. What number could you plug in? Have you got it? Hopefully you're thinking 24 because my table is in months. So I would say y equals 1.1 times 24 plus 7.9. And again, all on the same line. I get an answer of 34 point three pounds. All right, we're only actually going to do one more big problem together. Exercise four. 
biologists are trying to create a least squares regression, another name for line of best fit. Okay, so let's be familiar with those two. Line of best fit, least squares regression mean the same thing. Relating the length of the steelhead salmon to their, salmon to their weight. Seven salmon were measured and weighed with the data below. So again, pay attention. This is the length in inches. That's first, so that's automatically X. This is the weight in pounds. That's second, so that's automatically Y. All right, part A. Determine the least squares regression or line of best fit, rounding all coefficients to the nearest hundredth. So I'm not going to show pictures for everything, but I will talk you through it again. You're going to go to stat. Choose that edit. It's the first thing in there. Press enter. All right, this time everybody has to clear out their information. So you're going to arrow up to L1, wherever you entered it. You are pressing clear and enter. That should clear out all of L1. Clear is underneath the four arrow keys. Okay, you'll find the word clear and enter. Then you're going to do the same thing. Go over to L2, hit clear and enter. Clear it out. Once it's cleared out, enter data in. Remember, this first column is always L1, the second column is always L2, or row is always L2. Okay. Once you've got them in, and pause me when you need to, you're going to go back to stat, arrow over to calc, and you are choosing number four, linear regression. Once you choose that, it should come on your home screen, and you have to do L1, L2. Remember, this is second one, commas above the seven, second two. Hit enter. All right, at this point, I took a picture of what my calculator screen looked like. Hopefully you have those same numbers. Remember, if you don't have the R squared in the R, it's no big deal at the moment. Again, part A just wants me to write that line of best fit rounding to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to start with Y equals AX plus B. I'm copying exactly what I see. Okay, now I'm rounding the A value and the B value to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to say that's 1.33x, and then notice this b value is negative, so minus 27.98. And that's it. That's all part A is saying. Part B. Using your equation from part A, determine the expected weight of a salmon that is 30 inches long. So just pay attention to the units. 30 inches long. If they give you inches, are they giving you the x value or the y value? Which one is measured in inches? Clearly the x. So I'm going to plug 30 into the letter x. 1.33, use parentheses, minus 27.98. And type it in exactly how you see it. All on the same line, parentheses and all. I get, oopsie, uh, y equals 11.92 pounds. All right, our last part of the question, C. Using your answer from part A, predict the length of a salmon that weighs 55 pounds. All right, so I'm going to grab that equation from part A, y equals 1.33x minus 27.98. And again, just watch the units. It's not a guessing game. It tells you exactly. You know you have 55 pounds. Is pounds measured in the x value or the y value? Just read your table. Weight is in pounds, that corresponds to my y value. So this time I'm just plugging 55 into the y value and solving for x. So again, just read carefully which one they want. So now we're going to have to use a little bit of algebra skills and solve this nice simple equation. Well, if I want to get x by itself, I'm going to touch that last. I'm going to add over the 27.98, hopefully to both sides. So 27.98 plus 55 gets me 82.98 equals 1.33x. And lastly, if I want to get x by itself, all I have to do is divide both sides by 1.33. Notice I'm dividing to undo multiplication. And I get 62.39, I'm going to go nearest hundredth even though it didn't say, equals x. Now again, x is measured in inches, so I'm going to slap some inches on there, and that is a pretty long salmon. So, take your time. We're going to get a lot of practice tomorrow in class, um, and uh, we look forward to any questions. We'll be there bright and early if you need any help. Have a good night.